Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw With Rob. With me, Rob Biddulph. Actually, look, this is the new Draw With Rob Halloween book. Have you got your copy yet? It's nearly Halloween, isn't it, at the time of recording? Look, I've got to show you the picture. Ooh, that's me and Ringo. Demonic me and Ringo. From the Draw With Rob Halloween book. Super proud of this. If you haven't got your copy yet, you need to get it sharpish. Hang around to the end of this video and we can have a proper look through it together. But I am an author and an illustrator. Maybe you've seen another new book of mine. I've got so many new books out at the moment. This is my latest picture book. It's called The Blue Footed Booby. A booby, just in case you didn't know, is a large tropical bird of the gannet family with black and white plumage and brightly coloured feet. Not anything else that you might think it is. <laughs> and look, this story is about a load of red-footed boobies who like making cakes and stuff, but then <gasps> Desmond's cake goes missing. Oh, it's disappeared. And there's lots of blue footprints. Look, let's follow the footprints to see where they go. Left footprint, right footprint, dash through the snow. So they look through this book until they find, oh, nearly gave you a spoiler there, until they find a blue-footed booby who they suspect might have been taking all the cakes. It's a super fun one, if I do say so myself. Or maybe you like chapter books, in which case, have you seen my Peanut Jones series? This is the second book in the series called Peanut Jones and the Twelve Portals. It's all about Peanut here who finds a magic pencil that whatever she draws with that pencil comes to life. And look at the illustrations I've done in this book. So many of them. I just want to show you one other thing to do with Peanut because I've been on tour a lot recently and somebody, the Leeming family actually, gave me this amazing little tail box. Little tail is the name of the pencil in the story. And look, they've drawn every single draw with Rob drawing thing that I've done ever on a little post-it note which features in the Peanut Jones book and look there's a quote from Peanut there a pencil is a wand every single one has magic inside it but isn't that amazing they've drawn every single one on post-its that's not all because if I lift out this secret compartment here it's the pencil from the stories they've made a perfect model of the pencil with its really really sharp lead it's mysterious engraving on there which I'm not going to tell you about you have to read the story to find out what that is but isn't that incredible I love it so much I feel so lucky when people do things like that for me and bring them to my events super super lucky but we're not here to talk about how lucky I am we are here Whoop. we are here to do a drawing together now the drawing we are going to do, the animal we are going to draw today is called a lemur. Actually, specifically, a ring-tailed lemur. Now, I know it's National Lemur Day very soon. I'm going to put the date up now because <laughs> I can't remember it off the top of my head. I've got a feeling it's towards the end of October. Now, towards the end of October, I'm going to be doing a um, Halloween video. So I um, thought that I would do the lemur one now. So we're a bit early for National Lemur Day, but nevertheless, we are still celebrating lemurs. Now, lemurs are super cute. I, in fact, look, I've got something else to show you, show you lots of things. Look at this little guy. Cute little ring-tailed lemur and I was given this I did some over the summer I don't know if any of you went to London Zoo over the summer but there was a draw with Rob trail at London Zoo and there was a um, there was a thing where you could go and do some drawings with me uh, on the lawn there at London Zoo in the middle of the zoo and as a little thank you I did a did a live event there we did a live draw along there too and as a thank you they gave me this little lemur because um, lemurs are just one of my favorite animals ever and the ones at the zoo are just so super cute. So I thought I should show you all how to draw a ring-tailed lemur today. Now, just in case you haven't done one of these videos with me before, this is how they work. Lots of people say to me they don't think they're very good at drawing, right? I say that's nonsense. Everybody can draw. Some people just need a bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in. That's where I come in, because what we're going to do now, we're going to break this drawing down into little tiny bite-sized pieces. So I'm going to draw a little shape here on my piece of paper. Then I will pause. You can draw what I draw. Then I will draw a little bit more. I'll pause again. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. You draw. And by the end, we're going to end up with a lovely drawing of a lemur that you're going to be so super proud of. I'm going to say at the beginning, don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. It's not really meant to. It doesn't matter. That's the beauty of drawing. There is no right or wrong answer. So even if you think you make a mistake, just keep on drawing. Don't screw your piece of paper up and start again. That's the worst thing you can do. Just keep on going. Those little mistakes are what give our drawings character. Okay, stop 
talking, Rob, start drawing. Right, the first thing I want you to do is right in the middle of your piece of paper, we're gonna draw a kind of teardrop shape, okay? So we start off by sort of drawing, it's all, almost like a sort of circle, like that, but before, we're not gonna go all the way around, because when we get to the top, we're just gonna go up a bit, and then down, and then we're gonna carry on going around. So it's sort of like a funny teardrop shape, okay? So an odd little shape to start our drawing with. And I wonder if you can guess where we're starting. That's fun, isn't it? To see which bit of the lemur we might be drawing first. Right, the next thing that I want you to do is in right in the middle of the sort of the bulb of your teardrop shape, I want you to draw an oval like that. So like a squashed circle, just like that. Okay, where's my little lemur? Oh, knocking stuff over. I'm gonna make my lemur look at me so I can get the coloring right. It's quite good sometimes to have it, drawing from, they call it drawing from life. So if you're drawing a picture of an apple or something like that, it's always good to have an apple sitting there in front of you so you can look at it and make sure that you, you know, observational drawing is a really fun thing to do. And um, and if you're drawing, I don't know, if you draw a picture of your one of your siblings, your brother or sister or your parents, something like that, it's good to start, sit there in front of them and actually draw from life sometimes. Sometimes it's really just nice to make it up out of your imagination, but sometimes it's good to draw from life. And although I don't have a lemur with me, a real life lemur with me today, I do have this guy. So I've got him sitting just opposite me in my studio and I can have a look at him when I'm drawing and try and get the kind of colours and that kind of thing right. Okay, so what I want you to do next is we are going to colour in that little oval. Why not? Okay. Then I want you to draw a straight line coming down from that oval, going to the bottom of the teardrop thing that we drew first of all. So far, so easy, right? Okay, next. In these sort of little spaces here and here, I want you to draw a nice big circle that sort of comes around like that, goes up and out. So quite big, probably bigger than your original kind of teardrop shape, actually. So like that. And we're gonna do exactly the same on the other side. Now remember, one of the hardest things to do in drawing is to make things, when there's two of things, like I, oh, eyes, I've just told you what we're drawing. Ah. I was meant to leave it as a surprise, wasn't I? All right, I've ruined it now. That's the nose, these are the eyes. But one of the hardest things to do when you're drawing is when you're drawing something that there's two of, like eyes or ears, something like that, is to make them as sort of the same, okay? People agonize over that, trying to get the circles exactly the same size or exactly the same shape, that kind of thing. Do you know what? It really doesn't matter. Just draw it. It doesn't matter if one's bigger than the other. Look, mine aren't exactly the same shape and size, are they? So please, please don't agonize over that sort of thing. Just draw and just have fun. Right, so I've told you they're the eyes. They're actually the sort of the eye surround bit because lemurs have these kind of nice big black patches around their eyes. So what we're gonna do inside each of those circles, we're gonna draw a smaller circle like that. Let's do it in both. Might as well keep both uh, at the same stage, I think. And then inside each of those, we're gonna draw another circle that we're gonna color in. And look at our lima is awake. It's amazing, isn't it? When you just color that little circle in the middle, immediately your character looks wide awake. <laughs> now I'm not gonna color these in black, actually, these rings around the eyes, because they will be sort of black, but um, I'm gonna do them in a kind of dark gray color a bit later on, because I still wanna be able to see a little bit of detail here and there, so I don't want it to be too solid black, like the nose and like the pupils in the eyes. So we're just gonna leave that for now. But what we're gonna do now is, we are gonna come up from just above the bottom of this kind of nose panel here, and we're gonna come up and around, actually I'm gonna use my I've got two pens on the go here. I've got a slightly thicker one and a thinner one. Go back to my thicker one. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna go around that eye, we're gonna sort of follow it all the way around, and we're gonna dip down in the middle, like that, little curvy shape at the bottom. And then we're gonna trace that eye all the way around and go back in on the other side, like that. So we've kind of tied the whole thing together in our lemur's little face, okay? Actually, while we're here, let's do some little whiskers. One of my favorite little tips that I always say to people at my live shows is if, oh, 
Can you hear that? Ringo is sitting behind me and he's scratching. He's having a, one, a good old kind of scratch. Don't know if you could hear it. Maybe the microphone didn't pick it up, but I certainly could. Let's just hope he doesn't start barking halfway through. Right, yeah, and to make something that has whiskers sort of look like they have whiskers or look like they're a little bit more kind of animalish. Instead of having to draw whiskers, which are big sort of long lines like that, which might make your drawing look a bit messy, if you just add, I'm just gonna add four little dots like that on either side of that kind of central nose line. And it just gives the impression that they've got whiskers without having to draw lines. So it's just kind of quite a nice efficient way of making your animal look a little bit more animalish, if that makes sense. <laughs> Of course it doesn't, but anyway, you get what I mean, I'm sure. Right, the next thing to do is we're gonna finish off our little lemur's head. Now these two curves that come up here, I want you to imagine that they continue up. So we're gonna sort of trace it along, but we're gonna continue it up this time. And we're gonna go around the top like that. And then when we get to the middle of the head, top of the head, we're just gonna do a few little kind of tufts like that, cute tufts before we carry on around here and then disappear back into the head like that. So that's just gonna be the top part of our lemur's head. I'm going back to this pen here just to make these nice and sharp. But don't worry, you don't have to do that. I just like making sure everything's nice and sharp if I can. Right, there we go, that's our lemur's head. We've got to give our lemur some ears. They have nice big sort of fluffy ears and they sort of coming out, we're gonna do them coming out sort of diagonally there and there okay so we're gonna come sort of like a leaf shape really like this but I might just add a bit of tuftiness like that yeah that's pretty good so can you see I've just added a few little kind of pointy bits on a rough leaf shape and we're gonna do the same over the other side we come up do a little pointy bit there maybe another one here and in there don't worry about making them too uh, symmetrical they don't have to be exactly the same these two ears there we go two little ears and then inside those ears we're going to add this time i'll do a smoother leaf shape like that for sort of the inside the lining as i always call it of the ears like that there we go oh that's cute looking very cute our little lemur here i think um the thing about a lemur is they're so distinctive, their colouring, the sort of the black, white and the grey. It'll only make proper sense when we colour it in right at the end. Then it will suddenly start really, really looking like a lemur. But I think this guy is pretty cute so far. Right, time to do the lemur's body. Now what we're going to do, so from below the pupil, right? So come down from below the pupil and go to the edge of the face there. And what I want you to do is draw a line that's sort of just... It's not quite vertical. It just goes in very slightly at the bottom to the left, okay? We're gonna do exactly the same on the other side. So start roughly below the pupil, and we're gonna come down very slightly, turn inwards, okay? So two lines like that. Then, from the bottom here, we go straight across, half a centimeter or so, maybe not even that. And then we go up and over below the nose in an arch, nice smooth arch. And we come down to the other side, we square off the bottom of that one as well. So it's like a sort of bridge shape. It will become clear, don't you worry. So these are basically gonna be our lemur's arms, I suppose you'd call them, sort of front legs. Um, and so we're gonna do, they've got little, lemurs have got, they're, I don't think they are, they are, they are, primates but they're not considered monkeys but they do have opposable thumbs that means the thumb moves in the opposite direction to the finger which means that you can grip now that doesn't sound that important but that is one of the main reasons why us humans have evolved to be so clever because all what that means is once you can grip with your opposable thumbs you can make things so you can make tools so the very first humans because they could do that they learned how to make tools which made them be able to make things that help them catch other animals to eat, build houses, that kind of thing. It made us kind of evolve to be the kind of the super smart, most of us, super smart beings that we are today. And lots of primates um, have opposable thumbs too, including the lemur. So we're gonna draw, we're gonna start on this, this side here and we're gonna draw like a shape sticking out like that. Then we're gonna come down, we're gonna draw four fingers, one, two, three, 
four and then join back up. So we've given our lemur like a little hand really. And we'll do the same on the other side. So you come out, draw a little sausage shape coming out like that. Then we do four more. One, two, three, four. There we go. Now, this lemur is going to be sitting down. I don't know if you guys remember, we did the unicorn. It was way back, oh, a long time ago, video number 18, the unicorn. We did our unicorn kind of sitting down with their feet kind of facing out towards us. We're gonna do the same thing with the lemur today. I really like drawing animals like that. I think I've done something else like that too. You guys will probably remember better than me, but I think I've done that with something else. I'm gonna have to think, maybe the panda. I think I might have done the panda like that. But we're gonna do the same with our lemur. I just think it's a really kind of cute way of drawing animals. But because our lemur has these opposable thumbs, like hands, like ours, they kind of have them on their feet as well. If you see what I mean? Because they've got four feet, really. They haven't got hands and feet, it's just four feet. But they all have opposable thumbs, which helps them when they're kind of climbing around in the rainforest. I probably should tell you where lemurs are from. They're from mainly found in the, in the wild. They're found in Madagascar. It's the only place I think they're found. And they live in the rainforest there. But they, actually, although they're very good at climbing because they have these opposable thumb things, um, they spend most of their time on the ground, actually, foraging on the ground, eating food on the ground. They do climb up trees, but they don't go right to the top of the canopy. They just have to sort of hang around in the middle of the trees and down towards the ground. There you go. Fun lemur, ring-tailed lemur fact. Right, anyway, so we are drawing our lemur sitting down, so we're going to do the other feet, but we're going to do them sort of out, facing out towards us, so that means we have to do them like this. We're going to come around in a kind of curve like that, right next to that little hand there. And then we're gonna draw, oh, Ringo's got up. He's having a wander. Don't bark to go out, mate. I'm drawing for the children. That's right, lie down. Good boy, good boy. Sorry about that. Um, so we're gonna then draw our little sausage there, which is gonna be our sort of foot thumb. Then we'll come up and we'll draw the four other sausages. One, two, three, four, join up again there. So it's another kind of, hand shape, but I've done it, it's kind of going out at an angle like that. We're gonna draw a mirror image over this side. So you can look at your other one to sort of get the size roughly right, but remember what I said, don't worry if it's not exact, mine won't be. So there we go, we start with the thumb, then we're gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And there is our other little foot, kind of sticking out towards us. Now we need to join the whole thing together. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a little line that comes up there. It's gonna go behind those hands, curving around, and join up back there. Now they have these kind of haunches. So you've gotta imagine this is kind of the front of our lemur. And then we're gonna do the little haunches, just coming out there, curving around, we'll make it a little bit furry, like that. We'll do another one over here. There we go. Can you see now? You sort of made sense of it now, it's all joined up. So our lemur is sitting down, these two hands on the ground, these two hands stroke feet things pointing towards us. Really starting to look nice now, our lemur, I think. What does our ring-tailed lemur still need? The clue, my friends, is in the question. It needs its tail, and lemur's tails are amazing aren't they they're so long so what i'm going to draw we're going to draw our tail going all the way around like that behind and it's going to act it's going to be the tail obviously but it's also going to act as a nice kind of little frame for our lemur drawing it's going to look really cute i think um their tails Obviously, their tails are, for a start, their tails, I think, are longer than the rest of their bodies. So, you know, when they walk along, their bodies are that long and their tails are like that long. Um, they're really long. They Obviously, they help, tails like that, they help, um, they help animals balance when they're climbing trees, that kind of thing, because they can use the tail as kind of a counterweight when they're climbing. And I think they can use them to actually grip onto trees and that kind of thing, too. So although the lemur, the ring-tailed lemur, doesn't climb that much, he still does climb sometimes, so the tail really helps them out but they're my favorite fact about their tail. They use them um, when they're kind of battling and when they're fighting rival lemurs. And what they do, that's a bit horrible, they make their tails smell, right? So they have these kind of scent glands on their wrists, which they rub on their tail, and they also emit a kind of a scent from, um, how shall I put this nicely? From their bottoms, they do. And this results in the tail really stinking. And what they do, they kind of wave the tail at their rivals and it's called stink fighting. What? They're so cute, yet they do all this stink fighting. 
I thought that was a little fun fact. So there you go, you can have that one <laughs> for free. Right, so we need to draw this tail. So what I'm gonna do, as I said, we want this tail to kind of go all the way around here. So I'm gonna start down here. So the tail will be connected to the lemur's kind of bottom behind where he's sitting. It's gonna come out the side here. It's gonna go all the way up there. We're gonna go behind that ear, like that. We'll carry on around the top, behind the other ear, like that. And then we're gonna come down past the ear we'll go down to here it's curling around and then we're going to start going back i'm going to make the tail a bit fluffy at the end like that and then we're going to go back we're going to go around here we'll just skim the top of that ear i think it gets a bit fatter towards the end so we are just going to make it it's going to get slightly closer together as we get nearer to the bottom it's going to come around go in here and disappear back there cute there is a little ring-tailed lemur's ring tail making a ring around our lemur's body so can you see what i mean it makes it like a nice frame for our picture so cute right now it's time to start doing a bit of coloring as I said, it's the colouring that's really going to make our little um, ring-tailed lemur look like a ring-tailed lemur. So it's really, really important. That being said, so the colours mainly, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at our lemur here. So you can see here, I know he's a bit big to fit under here, but there's a lot of black and white and grey going on here. And then the tail is kind of, it's got lots of black stripes along it here. So grey here, white tummy, that kind of thing. So I'm going to colour mine. I'm going to stick to these kind of colours. They've got lovely actually got lovely kind of yellowy golden eyes so I'm going to stick to those colours but this is Draw With Rob and as you know with Draw With Rob the rules are there ain't no rules so you can make yours rainbow coloured lemur if you like it might be super fun actually um, maybe afterwards you can write a story as to why your lemur is multicoloured see that could be a really fun thing to do I'm going to colour mine the regular colours and we're also going to go into super speed mode to do my colouring. So I will see you back here in about 20 seconds or so with a fully coloured in Lima. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. There we go, my little ring-tailed lemur. Now, do you see what I mean? Once you kind of color it in, with all its very distinctive markings, that lovely stripy tail, the black hands and feet, the black rings around the eyes, the black nose, the inside of the black ears, combined with the kind of the white of the tummy, the white of the face, the white ears, and the gray of everything else, that's when it really, really starts to look like a lemur. So the coloring is super important. That being said, I really hope I get sent lots of lovely rainbow colored ones or you know pink and blue ones that kind of thing and yellow and green with purple spots all that sort of stuff because I love seeing how creative you, you guys can be but that is my ring-tailed lemur a few things to tell you about I've done that thing which I do quite often on my videos when I'm drawing furry animals once I've kind of done the shading for a start you can see my light source is over here so that's why the, the right hand side of my drawing is slightly darker than the left and underneath the chin i've made it a bit darker just to bring the head forward a little bit it's a little that's a little kind of artist's kind of trick to help your drawing look a little bit more three-dimensional you can see i've done it here in fact i'm just going to darken that line in front because it's been a bit kind of dulled by the pencil as i've colored over it similarly here it's quite a good thing to do just sort of do your outlines again and that will help sort of bring everything back in front again like that um but uh, yeah i sort of the legs behind here the rear legs i've sort of shaded slightly darker so that they recede a little bit and what i've done which i which i do in quite a lot of my videos i've added lots of little lines in my shading so once i've shaded it all i've got a darker gray uh, pencil and i've just added lots of kind of vertical lines over it. it just makes your drawing your the animal's fur look a little bit furrier similarly with the tail i used i don't know if you saw i used watercolor so i'll show you let me show you look at that messy tin of watercolor paints and what i do i've got one of these nice brushes where the water sits in the little reservoir there and then you paint 
with it, but you don't have to dip it in water because the water is the other side of the brush. So it's a clever way of using watercolor. And I just did some watercolor black on the eyes and around the nose here so that, because watercolor is slightly transparent. So although the nose area, for example, is black, I still wanted to be able to see my little whisker dots if you see what I mean. So that's why I use watercolour there. And also you can get that nice kind of watercolour edge, which I thought would work well on the stripey bit uh, on the tails. But then I've gone over the top with some pen, just again, just to make the tail look a little bit furrier. And I added lots of little lines on the edge of the tail as well, just to accentuate that kind of furriness. So lots of little tips going on there, which you can choose to ignore if you want, but I just thought I would do them to give you that option. Still a little bit wet in places, my drawing here and there. Needs a bit of tidying up, but I, as I said, I like it when there's little bits and blobs here and there, because it just adds a bit of personality to your drawing and it makes it look like somebody has painted it and drawn it by hand, which is very important, I think, for a drawing. So that's our little lemur. The last thing we need to do, very important, obviously, I always tell you this, we need to sign our drawing. I'll do my full signature today. There we go, Rob Bidoff. Um, so that everybody knows who has created these lovely works of art. And that's how to draw a cute lemur. What do you think? Let's ask our friend, shall we? What do you think of the lemur? Yes, I like him. Thank you very much. There's his tail. <laughs> we have approval from an actual, well, a soft toy version of a lemur. So I really hope you've enjoyed drawing this with me. I really like doing it. I really can't wait to see your drawings. The way I see them, is by getting, if you get your grown up to take a picture of your drawing and then post it on social media using this hashtag here, draw with Rob. That's the most likely way that I'll get to see it. So put it on Twitter or Instagram using that hashtag or Facebook even. But if you're watching on Facebook, just comment below and put a picture of your picture in the comments below. That way I will get to see it too. Um, and then, who knows, let's see if we're going to do a grid. I think I might do a grid this week. We haven't done a grid for a little while. I haven't done a Draw With Rob episode for a little while. So let me see. Once you send all your uh, all your lovely drawings in, I'll, I'll randomly select um, a load of them and we'll stick them up in the grid. Maybe yours will be there. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, yes, yeah, subscribe to my newsletter. Um, that's the best way of knowing when a brand new episode of Draw With Rob is going to be coming out. Also, you'll get lots of information about my new books and my tour events. So you can come and meet me and I, I do lots of bookshop signings. I turn up maybe somewhere near you and you can come and meet me. You can show me your Draw With Rob pictures. I'll sign your books and all that sort of thing. That's fun. Subscribe to the newsletter. That's the best way of finding out when that's going to happen. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. Remember to stick around if you want to have a look at the inside the Draw With Rob Halloween book because Halloween very soon. But otherwise, I think that's it. I have loved showing you how to do, to do this. I hope you've had a good time drawing along with me. I'm going to be back very soon for another episode of Draw With Rob. In the meantime, team, keep those pencils sharpened. Keep on drawing, keep on reading and have fun. And I will see you very soon. Bye-bye. everyone it's rob here popping up again at the end of your video just in case you hadn't had enough of my voice but the reason i'm here is because i wanted to tell you about my brand new draw with rob activity book and this time the theme is halloween <gasps> pretty spooky huh and here it is here's the book in lovely fluorescent orange and i'm very proud of it it's absolutely jam packed full of fun yet spooky activities for you to enjoy in the lead up to Halloween. What's in there, I hear you ask? Well, we've got lots of puzzle pages like this one here. We've got word searches. There are plenty of mazes, that sort of thing for you to enjoy. Loads of pages where I've started the drawing off and I need you guys to finish those drawings off. You can add the pumpkin faces to these pumpkins and you could color these lovely ghosts in here. Um, there are some face painting templates so that you can do your proper spooky face painting before you go out trick or treating. We've got a whole set of top trumps in here, spooky top trumps that you can cut out, shuffle up, deal out to your friends and play a game of spooky top trumps on the big 
evening itself. And of course, it wouldn't be a draw with Rob book without plenty of draw alongs. And as per usual, the pages are perforated. So once you've done your picture in those frames, you can tear the page out nice and easily and stick it up in your window. So all the trick or cheaters that come to your house can see your beautiful artwork. So there you have it. The sixth Draw With Rob activity book, Draw With Rob at Halloween. And it's out now, available to order from wherever you get your books from. And I really hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to share any pictures you draw from the book with me using that Draw With Rob hashtag. In the meantime, I'm going to see you again very soon. Take care and watch out for ghosts. See you soon. Bye bye.